वेलकम टू मेडी क्लास मैक्सिलरी साइनस और द एंट्रम ऑफ हाईमोर द मैक्सिलरी साइनस इज द लार्जेस्ट पैरानसल एयर साइनस इट इज एन एयर फिल कैविटी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस न्यूमेटिक कैविटी इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द बॉडी ऑफ मैक्सिला एंड इट इज बायोलैट्रली प्रेजेंट द मैक्सिलर साइनस इज पैराम्बल इन शेप एंड हैज अ वर्टिकल हाइट ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स अ ट्रांसफर्स विथ ऑफ टू पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स एंड द एंटीरो पोस्टीरियर लेंथ ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स Maxillary sinus is a four-sided pyramid which has a base and an apex. The base of the maxillary sinus is directed medially towards the lateral wall of the nose, and the apex of the maxillary sinus is directed towards the zygomatic bone. The four sides of the maxillary sinus are related to the surfaces of the maxilla. The anterior surface is related to the facial surface of the body of the maxilla. The inferior surface towards the alveolar process of the maxilla. the superior to the orbital surface of the maxilla and the posterior surface is related to the infratemporal surface of the maxillary bone since the maxillary sinus has four sides a base and an apex it is related to numerous structures the roof is formed by the floor of the orbit which is traversed by the infraorbital nerve and the artery the floor is formed by the alveolar process of the maxilla it is marked by the conical elevations from the roots of the maxillary premolars and the molars Sometimes the root of the teeth are separated from the sinus only by a thin layer of mucous membrane. The base of the maxillary sinus is related to the lateral wall of the nose. This is the lateral wall of the nose and this is the base of the maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus has an opening which is called as ostium located in the superior aspect of the lateral wall of the nose. It opens into the lower part of the hiatus semilunaris. This is hiatus semilunaris. and the lower most portion of the hiatus semilunaris has an opening for the maxillary sinus so the contents of the maxillary sinus are drained via the ostium into the nasal cavity the ostium or the opening of the maxillary cavity is about 6 to 7 mm in length however in an intact skull the length is reduced by the following bone the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone from above the descending process of lacrimal bone in front ethmoid process of the inferior nasal concha from below and the perpendicular plate of palatine bone from behind these structures reduce the size of the ostium so in the region of the middle nasal meatus present is the hiatus semilunaris and the posterior lowermost region has an opening for the maxillary sinus due to the superior location of ostium it makes natural drainage almost impossible to facilitate this a wave like motion or beating of hair like cilia facilitates drainage this is a specialized columnar epithelium with all columnar cells goblet cells which release mucus and the cilia which have a wave like motion that propels the mucus towards the opening of the maxillary sinus sometimes the mucosa almost completely fills the ostium the maxillary sinus has an anatomic variation called a septa the septa divides the sinus into compartments there could be one or more septa present septa can easily be identified using cbct which causes compartmentalization of the maxillary sinus it can either be present in the anterior middle or the posterior region of the maxillary sinus the height varies from 0 to 20.6 mm in length the maxillary sinus is the first paranasal sinus to develop and at birth it has a size of about 8 into 4 mm the development starts around the third month of intrauterine life by outpouching from the mucous membrane which lines the lateral wall of the nasal cavity that forms a slit like structure which turns into a slit like cavity which is followed by primary and secondary pneumatization of the maxillary bone acceleration in growth is seen around 6 years of age and attains a maximum height by 13 to 14 years of age so the maxillary sinus present in the body of the maxilla is small at birth but attains its full size by 16 years of age this is the lateral wall of the nose and in the region of middle meatus that is outpouching of the mucous membrane giving rise to maxillary sinus the maxillary sinus is supplied by the anterior the middle and the posterior superior alveolar arteries it is also supplied by the infraorbital artery the facial artery and the greater palatine artery in the region of the palate the venous components are drained into the facial vein anteriorly the pterygoid plexus posteriorly and the cavernous sinus superiorly The maxillary sinus drains into the submandibular lymph node. The nerve supply to the maxillary sinus is through the anterior, middle 
and posterior superior alveolar nerve also by the infraorbital nerve and the greater palatine nerve in the region of the palate the maxillary sinus has numerous clinical significance formation of oroantral fistula in presence of a periapical infection around the region of the maxillary sinus extraction of these tooth can lead to formation of oroantral fistula leading to communication between the sinus and the oral cavity in an attempt to extract maxillary tooth root piece can get dislodged into the maxillary sinus there can be referred pain as the maxillary nerve supplies the sinus as well as the maxillary teeth it becomes really difficult to differentiate from the pain caused by the tooth and the sinus hence proper diagnosis can help in treatment carcinoma can arise from the mucosal lining of the sinus and extend either into the orbit or towards the heart palate infection of sinus can cause sinusitis which is associated with headache and thick purulent discharge diagnosis can be made through the occipital mental view post extraction complication can arise after extraction of the maxillary premolars and the molars it is advised not to blow the nose however blowing of nose within the first 24 hours of extraction can lead to rupture of thin lining of the bone that separates the maxillary teeth and the sinus which can lead to sinus exposure and infection in case of implant surgery when there is inadequate vertical height to place an implant sinus lift can be performed indirect sinus lift can be done to perform implant placement or direct sinus lift can be performed by raising a lateral window placement of graft followed by implant placement coming to the functions of maxillary sinus it helps in humidifying and warming the inspired air it helps in regulation of intranasal pressure it helps in increasing the surface area for olfaction it helps in lightening the skull mass it provides resonance to the voice it acts as a shock absorber and helps to lessen the brain trauma it helps in contribution to the facial growth mucociliary propulsion of mucus and serous secretion towards the ostium to summarize it is the largest paranasal sinus and a four sided pyramid which is bilateral the roof is formed by the orbit floor by the alveolar process and the base by the lateral wall of nose it develops around 12th week of intrauterine life and attains a maximum size by 14 to 16 years of age it drains into the nasal cavity through the ostium it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium arterial supply is through the maxillary and the facial artery nerve supply is through the infraorbital anterior middle and the posterior superior alveolar nerves and the greater palatine nerve it helps in humidification of inhaled air adds resonance to the voice and helps in shock absorption you can find link to the google document which contains mcqs related to this topic you can attempt those and try to find out how much you learned today so thank you for watching the video we hope you liked it and if you did please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for further updates so see you in the next video till then stay healthy and have an amazing week